Hey everyone, I'm Damien the Kung Fit Coach, here to teach you Kung Fu and help you stay fit for life. We're looking at Mabu Gonbu punching, we're going to make sure we get all those details exactly right. <laughs> So we're going to step down to our Mabu. If you don't know how to do this position, check this link up there. That will give you all the details. Then we're going to go into our Gombu. So Gombu, from this position, what we're going to do, right hand side first, heel pushes out. As we push that heel out, we straighten that leg. It's going to naturally want to do that. So if you push the heel, the leg will naturally want to straighten. But make sure you push the leg back a little bit so you don't end up dropping the knee down towards the ground and lifting that heel up. So push that heel out, keep the heel pushed down into the ground and straighten that leg out. Next, hips. We want to turn our hips to the left. So left hip comes back, right hip comes forward. Again, as you do this, this leg isn't gonna wanna stay where it is. It's naturally gonna want to rotate your left foot forward a little bit. Let it, let it go, and indeed help it out a little bit. So from here, we push the right heel out, straighten that leg, turn the hips, and let that foot come around. We then want to finish up by making sure we turn our torso all the way through, so our shoulders are facing this direction as well. So we started here, hips and shoulders facing towards the camera, and then we turn through so that hips and shoulders are facing 90 degrees away. This is our gombu position, okay? Nice and square. Now, you can imagine the transition from Mabu to Gombu and the throwing of a punch as a bit like an exaggerated form of a cross in boxing. So you look at a standard boxing cross, step our right foot back, what we do is we turn that rear foot in, turn the knee in, close up the hips, and then we throw the cross. Exactly the same principle, just in a much larger frame. So we're coming from here, we're turning the foot and the hips in, pulling the shoulder back, throwing the shoulder forward, and throwing the punch. So a lot of the power here is coming from the floor. We're getting power from the floor up through the body and then transitioning it into the arm. But the arms need to obviously do a bit of work as well. So we're gonna start from our marble position with our left arm out, as if we've punched to the side. And we're gonna be looking to the left as well. We push our heel out, we straighten that leg, we turn the hips and we let that foot come round. To make sure our shoulders fully go, we're also gonna pull the left hand back it's gonna to come to our hips, and we're gonna throw the right hand out. It's gonna start palm facing towards the ceiling, and then it's gonna to twist to palm facing down. And this is gonna be our finishing position, okay? We come back to our Mabu, we push that heel out, we turn the hips, we pull the left hand back, and we throw the right hand out. Now what we want to try and do is make sure that everything lines up in terms of timing. So we're kind of finishing the movement with our legs and our body at the same time as our fist is just about to strike our target. To do this, we want to start the motion down at the floor. Okay, so don't move your arms first. If you move your arms first, your arms will probably finish before your legs will. So start with the legs. Push that heel out first. Push the heel out, start to turn the hips. And as you start to turn the hips, that's when the arms really get engaged. So you push, you turn the hips and the left comes out uh, left comes back at the same time as you throw the right out and you're moving that front foot. So, all together we end up looking like this. So it can be very quick when you get used to it. It's just a matter of practice, as ever, and getting slowly faster and faster. So we can start quite slow, we push, we turn, we pull back, we throw out, and then we reset, and then we do the same again. But then as we get more comfortable, we can get faster with it. Okay, and each time we want to come back to this Mabu position. So don't let your knees cave in as ever. Come back, push those knees out, nice and stable. Now the last thing to think about is that punch into the Mabu where we pull back from Gombu. So we get into our Gombu position, we've got our hand punched out. From here we pull this hand back. As we pull it back, we rotate it to go from palm facing down to palm facing up towards the ceiling. And it comes back to our hip where it started. At the same time, we're gonna pull the shoulder back. We're gonna turn our legs. So the legs are gonna come from this gombu position. Bend that knee, turn it out, turn the hips back, 
to face forward, so remember we were 90 degrees, we turn back to face where we started in our marbu as we pull that hand back, as we pull that shoulder back. At the same time, we throw the left shoulder forward and punch the left hand out. Again, twisting out, just like we did with the gombu punch. So you come from here, pull back on the right hand side and throw it out on the left hand side. We finish up in marbu, having punched back to here. We carry on looking at our target, so we punch into gombu looking at it, we punch back to marbu looking at it. And just like with the gombu punch, we want to pull one arm back with as much power as we throw the other out. We want to do the same as we go back to marbu. So we're going to pull the left back, throw out power of the right, and then pull the right back power and power out of the left. That is the basics of how we do a marbu gombu punch. Now obviously we can do this on the other side as well, exactly the same principle. We'd go down to marbu, we'd start with the left leg, push that left heel out, straighten the leg, turn the hips, turn the shoulders, arms pull back, and one throws out. Exactly the same, but on the other side. Now, two things that you want to bear in mind if you're really gonna get power in this is one, you need to pull your non-punching hand back with as much power as your punching hand goes out. So if I'm doing it to my left, I don't just wanna relax, kind of pull back this arm and throw out a lot of power here. I wanna pull back with power as well because this is all about generating power through twisting. So we'll twist the body as much as we can. So to help that, we pull back on one side, we throw out on the other, we get a lot more. So compare this, not really using my right hand too much, to this. There's so much more in there. Tip number two for making sure you get power is to really turn those hips through. There can be a tendency to kind of finish here with your hips still quite open. You want to turn those hips through to that full 90 degree position we've talked about. So from here, all the way through to 90 degrees, and that will get you a lot more power. Make sure that leg is straight, make sure that heel is grounded, and you've got that structure throughout your body to make sure that as much power as possible is delivered through to the punch. One more thing to bear in mind is your height. So if you're down here in your marbu, when you punch into your gombu, you don't want to be up here. If you're coming up this much, you've driven all your power up into the sky. You want to drive your power forwards into your punch. So as much as possible, from your marbu through to your gombu, you don't want to change head height too much. You'll bounce naturally a little bit because obviously you're driving with this leg, this leg is straightening out, it's going to make you go up slightly. But don't full on come up, try and as much as forward, drive it, uh, much as possible, drive it forward. So we're here and we twist and we only lift up a little bit. We don't want to do this, yeah? So don't drag that foot in. Don't drive yourself upwards. Drive yourself forwards because that's where your power needs to go. And that should be enough to help you get a really good idea of how to do a powerful marbu to gombu punch. From there, it's about practice, obviously. It's about getting comfortable with it and Really, if you're going to do this over and over and over again, it's about getting that leg strength and it's about that cardio endurance to be able to keep going because actually this is quite a tiring move when you keep doing it uh, repeated after each other. There are a few more um, subtle details that you could throw into there um, to make it perfect, but that's kind of wading off into the weeds a little bit and we're not going to worry too much about that for now, but maybe in the future uh, we'll do another video kind of those fine little details that get that final 1% on it. So if you found this useful, make sure you give that like button a good hard Marbu punch. If you don't know how to do that, check out this video. And if you want more Kung Fu lessons or more advice on how to stay fit for life, make sure you hit the subscribe button as well. That's it for now, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.